What's up, everybody? Welcome to ITG Daily, the brand new show where we bring you the hottest gaming news from around the world. I'm Drew, and I'm joined by the one and only Scott Savage. Scott, what's happening, buddy? Awesome. Thank you for having me here, and I'm excited to join you. Nice. Today's show, we have ID at Xbox. They're talking about what their streaming is coming up with. We have Ascent coverage as well. Talking about Gotham Knights being delayed to 2022, new PSVR controllers, and a whole lot more. Scott, you ready to get things started, buddy? Oh, I'm ready. All right. Well, ID at Xbox has a showcase coming up on March 26th, and they stated, we're featuring tons of independent titles, including brand new game announcements from developers and publishers such as Drinkbox, Curve Digital, Devolver Digital, Deer Villagers, and others. During the showcase, we'll debut new trailers and gameplay with more than 25 games, including Stalker, Second Extinction, The Ascent, That Game Dude Has My Eye, The Wild at Heart, and more. We'll also be making announcements about independent titles coming to Xbox and Xbox Game Pass. Community favorite Twitch streamers will host and showcase the event, conduct interviews with developers, take fan questions, and even drop game codes. So you might want to check that out. It's coming March 26th, this Friday at noon. You can check out Twitch Gaming or Xbox Twitch channel itself. Scott, The Ascent. Dude, have you seen this game at all? Yeah, this is brand new news to me. I wasn't familiar with this one, but it's caught my eye now, and I'm excited to see what comes out of this stream. No, for sure. Uh, so the developer, Neon Giant, and publisher by, published by Curve Digital, The Ascent is set on a world where corporations own various districts. Playing as an indentured worker, you go about your daily task until a mega corporation known as The Ascent Group collapses. And then from there, you can... So it's this isometric, top-down look at the game. And the best part is, dude, it's co-op. That's cool to me. I'm excited for a co-op game, especially on Xbox too. Yeah, that looked really intriguing to me. The game, just uh, my first glance at it, reminds me of one that we did a review on uh, quite recently, and that is Ruiner, uh, but set in a little bit of a cleaned up, kind of nicer looking city, and the combat looks a little bit more uh, thought out and deliberate in this game. And it, it looks really cool, despite not having any sort of an IP surrounding it. Not that I'm aware of. Um, the Ascent looks like it's going to be a, a pretty strong first entry. If this is indeed the first game, uh, having co-op in a setting like that in the gameplay that I'm familiar with in The Ruiner is ex a very potent mix. That's exactly what that game could have used. And it's got me excited to see how this one works out. Yeah. I'm a big fan of the co-op thing in general. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> this looks like a good drop-in, drop-out kind of experience. No, absolutely. I was pretty excited. They revealed this a while ago. So now I guess my question is, Scott, are you looking forward to the new ID at Xbox showcase? Do you have any expectations? Drinks bo drink box alone known for actually producing PlayStation Vita titles. So the fact no. that they're coming to Xbox as an ID showcase, I'm pretty excited to see what they have up their sleeve. They've had some pretty smash hits, and they said when the PlayStation Vita launched, they actually went to Vita because the install base was almost starving for something to play. So it was an easy purchase in a sense, right? Because they'd be over there and they'd be, well, I was there. Well, rest in peace, Vita. Um, mm. Man, I, I mean, I, that was just, it was such a step forward. And then we saw the Switch come around, and that just changed everything as well. It just, uh, the Vita missed two buttons. Honestly, it missed the R2 and the L2, and maybe the analog clicks as well. But it was, it was a cool platform. <laughs> but to have Drinkbox now come over on the Xbox for the showcase, it definitely has me interested to see what they're up to because they've been quiet now for a while and i'd like to see what they have up their sleeve and of course then you also got the others too deer villagers is working on all kinds of stuff devolver digital second extinction is going to be pretty cool and stalker 2 scott do you ever play the stalker series at all i'm not personally firsthand familiar with stalker but i know that it is somewhat of a grandparent to a lot of other games in the genre yeah and that has me excited to see what they come out with for stalker 2 
because this is something that hasn't come around in quite a long time now, over a decade for sure since Stalker. And that means this could be something else in the running for what makes a really good shooter that year. And that's my definite favorite category of games. My genre is definitely shooter. So stealth shooter survival kind of crossover. Yeah. That is something that has me looking forward to it. And like you said, Devolver Digital, Dear Villagers, there's a lot of different developers that are going to be making mention at least in some capacity at this event. So that gives me a lot of things to look forward to because if Ascent can sneak in under the radar and I'm not aware of that one and I'm excited <laughs> now, there's a lot of other ones I'm sure that are going to get picked up and, and really take my attention. Stalker 2 is a big one. Second Extinction looks really interesting from everything that I've seen to do with that game. It's, uh, that, that's a, an interesting one that's not often done. And The Ascent has my eye now. X01 was something that I just kind of picked up on yep. uh, more recently, and that looks awesome. Again, another great shooter entry, I hope. <laughs> And uh, I'm I'm hoping that some of these smaller developers really come out with a strong mention because that's going to fill in a lot of the time. We've had a lot of time to play games in the last year, and my hunger for them, so to speak, is only increasing. <laughs> yeah, I know, I'm really hoping sure. that, that everybody can can stay at work in the development teams here and all these people have a comfortable experience producing these games so that hopefully themselves and the rest of us can enjoy it for the rest of the time we have indoors i want i want to see bite-sized games kind of come out of the id and xbox showcase i want to be able to get in there play for a couple hours and feel completed when i'm done you know what i mean i'm not looking for major expansive triple a hours on end and you're there for 40 to 100 hours i want to be able to jump in play something for four to five hours have a great time and then get out so i'm hoping we see a lot of that coming out of this yeah that's well that's a good point i feel like we've been kind of a little bit bombarded with large titles that take large chunks of time yeah and for for at least this season um we've had a, quite a few of those pass by so it would be much nicer to your point to have something more drop in drop out and casual so that i i can experience something without you know, devoting the whole day to it <laughs> although sure. i I may anyways. <laughs> Absolutely. All right, let's move on to the next one. I Okay, this one I didn't see coming. Like, this was just a bit of a surprise. PlayStation buys Evo. Sony Interactive Entertainment and new esports venture RTS have jointly acquired the Evolution Championship Series. Man, I just... Today, we're thrilled to announce the next chapter in the story of PlayStation and Evo, the world's largest and longest running fighting game tournament. Scott, I didn't see this one coming, man. This was uh, a unique purchase out of Sony teaming up with RTS to, to buy the Evo and keep it alive. Because obviously, in the past year, due to COVID, I think this is really where a lot of it came from, too, because COVID had such an effect on the tournament market and genre how do you transition? Well, they've transitioned onto online. I've seen a lot, especially as of late, we've seen a lot of uh, Mortal Kombat on PlayStation. And I'm a huge Mortal Kombat fan, so I'm jumping in to watch. But now if you have that Evo name behind it too, I think this is a, a unique and impressive purchase that just uh, I didn't see coming from PlayStation at all. Yeah, Evo is a, a massive uh, kind of fan undertaking. It's, it's yeah. a large event. And I'm, I'm not super familiar with it just due to, I think I, I'm just a little out of the window in age bracket. I was just a little <laughs> bit too young to know too much about Evo. Yeah. But I, I do know that they, like, like they state, they were the first and one of the largest tournament yeah. scenes. And yeah, like you said, it's, it's, the pandemic is definitely hard to put you know, even five people in a room, it's hard to hold a tournament of that size. So hopefully Sony grabbing a hold of it will 
do two things. Hopefully, they'll be able to operate in some sort of capacity, and maybe Sony will help out with that and, and set it up online so that Evo can remain to be a name. And, yeah. and two, I hope it, Sony being a financial backer now owning this, uh, it keeps Evo alive despite what's happening in the world around us. We're not sure exactly what other tournaments are, are going to come into issue or express some you know, financial troubles after a whole year or more of shutdowns. So this is hopefully a good sign that some things that we're used to will remain and flourish on the other side of this. I'm not sure exactly how big or what games encompass Evo entirely, but I know that it's a lot more than just Sony titles. So I'm yeah. curious as to what this will mean um, going forward as, as Evo operates. Is, is it going to be something more Sony-backed? Are they going to push a lot of their first parties? Or is this really just well, a parental ownership over... I honestly think it's a parental ownership because like PlayStation doesn't have a fighting game, right? They have PlayStation all-stars. I enjoyed the crap out of that game, but it's just not in in the fighting like scene for tournament wise, right? You get into mortal Kombat, you get into street fighter, you get Tekken and you get smash smash and Nintendo right now are just in a unique place alone. Whether or not they're going to come back to Evo, they've had some online connection issues and because right now everybody's transitioning to online, I just don't see Nintendo sticking around. And obviously, I'm not the biggest Evo guy at all. I'm a Mortal Kombat fan. That's kind of where I draw the line. But when you get into Smash, Nintendo, and Evo, things just aren't going to match up right there. Because if you try to play Smash online, the Switch is still a, a just a mistake of internet connections and online opportunities, right? Like there's not the infrastructure there that PlayStation or Xbox have when it comes to online connections and, and party chat and all that kind of good stuff. But yeah, I'm curious to see if we get, if we get smash at all now, because smash is a huge competitive scene in the world of tournaments. Smash has its own following. Like there's just, there's opportunities there, but if PlayStation can convince them to join, then I think you're into something unique and special, but it's a matter of getting there. And I don't know if Nintendo wants to do that because Nintendo is, we say it all the time here, Nintendo is just Nintendo. So they kind of go out and do their own thing. You know what I mean? So to see them, I don't know if they'll join Evo or not. Definitely. Uh, Yeah. My first guess would be, I, I doubt it. I have serious doubts just because there is something of a situation going on with Nintendo and their melee tournament specifically they they're cracking down on certain avenues that people are setting up tournaments via and it doesn't seem like it lends itself well to the situation at the moment to set up an Evo uh, presence with Nintendo but maybe this is something of Sony's com- competitor to the Smash scene Sure. Now that seems kind of, it's almost difficult to say because the smash scene is so large and expressed already but if there was some of a fan backing if there was a revival of uh that's the Sony All-Stars I forget the <laughs> PlayStation name of All-Stars that title yeah. because I <laughs> I've so often called it Sony Smash Bros <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's fair um, and I really I did personally enjoy uh, the first title of of that game as well so and i was surprised that i would enjoy it as much as i did hopefully you know they just come out with another title a little bit of innovation and make it for the new console series and maybe there's a new community that could pop up around that but that's a little risky who knows exactly well what sony is planning here is definitely a move um to offset what xbox is doing likely we've seen xbox make a lot of ac- acquisitions lately and yep. and some business moves that maybe sony is a little bit um not intimidated by but feels the need to reciprocate no for sure for sure i think sticking with covid too we see also the delay of gotham knights until 2022 gotham knights has been delayed 
they had this over on Twitter. The Gotham Knights team had, we are giving the game more time to deliver the best possible experience for players. Thank you to our amazing fans for your tremendous support of Gotham Knights. We look forward to showcasing more of the game in the coming months. I can't say I'm all that surprised at this point. We, we've seen the struggles that uh, COVID has placed on teams, development teams, everybody shifting to home. I think when you talk about ID at Xbox, you're talking about in indie de developers that are already at home and they're already situated in that, in that sense. But when you get somebody like Warner Brothers who are just this massive team to shift everybody and transition them and, and move all that equipment, that's a lot of work. And then there's just, there's so many IT situations that get involved when it comes to that, something like that. So to see this delay, I can't say I'm all that surprised, Scott. What about you? Well, I had the security involved when you're moving all these people home, but yeah, they're still sure. transferring files and things back and forth. The, the security and the chance of leaks, you know, becomes much more of a, an oh, issue. Yeah. We've seen a lot of companies delay a lot of projects over this past year so this like you said isn't too much of a surprise now there's a certain level of quality that the, the gotham series needs to maintain so i think that if they are making this decision i i don't i'm not taking it lightly i i think it's something that they've reflected on and yeah it's probably the strategic right idea because we've seen a lot of these games come out cyberpunk whether it's <laughs> cyberpunk yeah right? some of them are are half baked um when they come out of the oven yeah. and could have used just a little bit more time so I, I i'm always a fan of them you know taking their time and shifting deadlines as long as it maintains a good product i'd rather see that instead of something a, a placeholder you know Owning the, the name for a month, but nobody's into it. That's not, that's just disappointing. There's a few titles recently that have come out that have just, you know, kind of hurt their own um, homegrown community that would have popped up. But yep. just, uh, I don't think botched, delays are, are a bad delay thing at all. Uh, delays are something that need to be done sometimes just for the better of the game. You want to have a good game and you want to have it, you only get one launch window, right? So to have that launch and have it strong, that's what your goal is for. You want to nail mm -hmm. that because if you get that cyberpunk taste in your mouth, they've got a lot of work over at CD Projekt Red to bring that game back around. So I don't know if they'll be able to do that. I know people are still playing the game 200 hours in. So yeah. Yeah, there's something there, but the launch was just, oh man, remember that game? Oh man, remember cyberpunk when that launched? It, it gets that mentality, right? So if you don't have to deal with that right from the get-go, take your time delay the game hopefully your investors understand and have a good launch instead of one that you gotta have kind of fight with later on but let's move on to something else that's more exciting than a delay let's talk about the playstation vr controllers scott we saw something new pop up on the um playstation blog and they had a few things to comment about the actual controllers the new style SIE products, engineering, and design teams have collaborated to build our new VR controller from the ground up with the goal of making a huge leap from current gen VR gaming. We're thrilled with the controller we've developed, but what matters now is how game creators will take advantage of the features to design the next generation of VR experiences. Prototypes of our new VR controller will be in the hands of the development community soon. That right there, Scott, that comment. <laughs> right there prototypes of our new vr controller will be in the hands of the development community soon which now tells me dude we're not getting anything anytime soon when it comes to the world of, of psvr2 and i was really hoping you know okay so you launch ps5 it's nowhere to be found now it's hard as anything to find one yeah. uh, they're out of stock right xbox is out of stock playstation's out of stock that's fine you don't want to launch the PlayStation and then immediately follow that up with the next VR headsets, right? Then you get into that computer scenario of buying a massive PC to run your VR headset. That's kind of where mm -hmm. this window gives, give the room to breathe for the PlayStation 5. But I didn't think the way that sounds like the community of developers don't even have it yet in their hands. And I was shocked that nobody has this yet. I was like, man, like, because games don't take six months to build. They take years 
to build. So when are we going to start seeing the PlayStation VR 2? That's my question to you, Scott. When are we going to see the next PSVR 2? <laughs> yeah, it still seems like quite a while away, but it's a strange message they put there because, yes, developers are just getting it now, but that does also confirm that they've at least produce the lizard wear. it does exist they yeah. you know i suppose or i can <laughs> considerably they've taken the kinks out and they've figured out their technology at least to the point where developers can now get their hands on it to get use of some of those functions or at least to include them in their first iteration of games because if the first games came out for this psvr2 but they lacked all of the new shiny oh, features then that would be a quite a, a letdown that would leave the wrong kind of taste in your mouth for sure and this seems to have quite a, a lot of interesting features uh, i've read that there is an uh, responsive triggers um what do they call that adaptive yeah, haptic vibration, feedback. But yep. Yeah, haptic feedback in the controllers. That's something that's really interesting to me because in VR, I can imagine how it could really uh, <laughs> bring somebody into the experience. Yep. And there's a lot of capability here. So there's a duality. At one, on one hand, the development of games is going to take quite a while. I would say at least a year, but I'm not an expert. But at the same time, it is real. This isn't a rumor. They sure. found it. They're sending. They're showing it off. Um, it's on the way, and they want you to know that. So it's. I think there's a a lot of marketing value there, but yeah, I'm I'm left confused. The I still have the first issue of sorting uh, and finding a PS5. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but mm. now that I'm thinking of of this new wave of VR, I'm a lot more curious as, as to when things locally are being restocked. How far away is a PS5? Is that actually doable for me? Yeah. Now I'm considering it, whereas I wasn't before. What I like is the direction of the controllers themselves, because we've had the Move controller, and those Move ones, man, were from PS3, and they adapted them over into the VR controllers. I was, I was shocked to see that, I guess, when you look at Oculus and what they created with their controllers, and now they're on the Oculus Quest 2, and then you get the Vive as well, right? So they all have analog sticks or a touchpad of some sort, where the Move controller was just a trigger on the bottom and a thumb button, and then your usual, you know, X, zero, all that kind of stuff, X and O's, all the way around, triangle, square, buttons. So to get past that now and to give us an actual, what feels like a real controller, I think this is, it allows it to bring over other games as well. Games we already see, like, I don't know if we'll ever see it, but maybe, could you imagine Half-Life Alex on the PlayStation VR? Right? Like, there's an oh, opportunity it, there now. I think we could. You think yeah, so? That would be a great opportunity. <laughs> oh, yeah. Does Valve want to do that? With That's the, the haptic, question. With the ha haptic feedback and things that we're not used to on Oculus, that could be sure. a, a good selling point as well. Yeah, absolutely. So it gives the opportunity now for other developers to port the game onto PlayStation VR, as well as, you know, you go to Oculus, you can go to Vive. Now you can go to PlayStation, where before you had to rearrange your mechanics because of the move controllers. So I'm hoping this makes things easier. I hope this will now, we'll see a bigger thrive with PlayStation VR 2. When they launched PSVR 1, they stated this is like launching the PlayStation, the original PlayStation. This is year one. This is us starting from the ground up. I think they've learned a lot of lessons. And now moving into PSVR 2, we see them already learning and understanding. The, oh, the first thing we need to do is fix that controller. Second thing, we need to simplify how we connect. Because if you connect the PSVR right now, there's like a spaghetti of wires everywhere. <laughs> and it's just a nightmare. Now they're simplifying it. It's one cord, they've stated. Jim Ryan says it's one cord. It's like, like oh man, so much easier, right? That's much better. Exactly. Absolutely much better. So I'm guessing by the time we get to the third VR headset from PlayStation, it will be wireless. That's my goal. That's my fingers crossed, right? That kind of scenario. But we'll see what happens. But man, we've yeah. only got five minutes left, Scott. And there's still so much to talk about. So let's move on to game announcements. 
Payday 3 is real. I was shocked to see this. We are excited to announce this exclusive long-term Payday 3 co-publishing deal with Koch Media, who shares our passion with the Payday franchise and the games as a service model. Uh, I want to stop right there, Scott. Yeah. You know what I mean? I suppose, <laughs> I, I service, suppose buddy. Payday was one of the first <laughs> to do the, pay, or the, the, the games as a service model, actually, now that I think about it. I'm not super familiar of uh, Payday, not yeah. firsthand. I, I know Payday 2 is still a big deal and has been for years, though. Yeah. So I, I know there is a large following to this game. It, it makes me curious to check it out. But what's up with Payday 3? Is this... <laughs> they had to make sure that you know it's real. They want us, they want Has us this to been know... long that... rumored? Well, so Star Breeze has had one problem after another just from funding to surviving alone i honestly thought after payday 2 star breeze was done it looked for the longest time like they were just gonna fold up because they had one problem after another over in the studio and it wasn't looking very good so Koch media sweeps in and scoops them up to publish this deal they said it's completely funded for, for marketing and actually publishing the game. That's fantastic for fans of the Payday series, but when it comes to actual Payday itself, in Starbreeze, I really didn't see this one coming. I thought they were finished. I thought they were going to fold up the studio, and that was the end of Starbreeze as we kind of knew them. But moving forward, Payday 3 is the thing. But they also touched on the games of service. A lot of games are coming as games of service, and a lot of them aren't working. Let's be honest. We've seen Anthem come and go. We've seen Marvel's Avengers struggle. They've come out now with a roadmap after so long of launching the game. So I'm hoping when they are ready to launch the game that they already have everything else lined up and ready to go. If you want to have a games as a service, I'm hoping you already have six months to a year of content before launching the game to keep us all involved. Otherwise, we're going to bounce out. And that's kind of what developers are focusing on now is the games is a service. And if you focus on that, then you have to have content. If you don't have content, Scott, we're not sticking around. Yeah, I, I, I definitely agree. They'd have to have at least somewhat of a roadmap for what's coming out and make it look, look deliberate and planned. Otherwise, this games as a service too often, I think, gets construed as a backup plan. Yeah, for sure something goes wrong your game development uh, doesn't quite churn out the product and you your maybe your launch is a little bit yeah. off not quite what it was supposed to come up as a consolation prize no nope, absolutely i don't want it to be that way and i i don't think that's supposed to be the idea so uh, wave of games as a service and eventually get to something a little more concrete but uh, it's hard to say these video game uh, <laughs> phases can be quite long and hard to predict no nope, absolutely scott why don't we wrap things up what games are coming out today all right well there is not a, a terribly large <laughs> list of things coming out on this specific day it's been somewhat of a, a, a busy few months in the past and i think we're kind of a, coming out of that large bubble of releases and now we're getting into a little bit of a quiet before what i assume is another large bubble of releases it's been <laughs> quite a lot of things coming out lately but we have um, very recently, I'm going to include this one on that just because it just came out on the Switch, and that is Plants vs. Zombies Battle for Neighborville, which we actually did a review on on yep. the Xbox. We Override did. to Super Mac League, and this is releasing as part of the season pass. Excellent. And that will be it for today's show. Everybody, thank you so much for joining us, and we will be back tomorrow. See you then.